Many years ago, I made this refillable aerosol can for WD-40. The reason I did that is because an 8-ounce can of WD-40 runs about $6. A gallon of WD-40 is about $30. So if you bought a gallon worth of WD-40 in an aerosol can like this, it cost you $96 versus $30. Three times difference. Well, my problem today, and has been for a little while, I haven't done anything about it, is this quit working. And it's got pressure. I've got it pumped up, but it won't spray. And I've changed the tip on it. Well, you can see it's got fluid in it. So something must be messed up inside. Well, I've been saving up my old aerosol cans. These are all empty for this very reason. I knew I needed to replace this, but also if you want to do PB blaster or make an aerosol spray can, I'll have these available. But today I'm going to make one for the WD-40 to replace this, and I'll show you how I do it. Let's let the pressure out of this one. And I'm going to take it apart and show you how these cans are built. Might as well pull the core out of this one. And I'm going to empty out the WD-40 that I have left in it. And it helps to press the button because that lets air back in the can. Now I want to give you a warning here. I'm just doing this for entertainment purposes. These cans under pressure can be dangerous. And also, if you're working with carb cleaner or engine starting fluid, that stuff's very, very flammable. Working with that around heat can be very, very dangerous, and I'm going to rinse those cans out very good before I even start working with them. And let's open it up and see what's inside. So basically, all you've got here is a can with a nozzle on top, a straw inside connected to the nozzle, they build the can, fill it up with 8 ounces of, in this case, WD-40, pressurize the can with, I think these are about 90 to 100 pounds per square inch. That's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and build a new one and see if we can get it to work. Now the can I'm going to use is carburetor cleaner. There's no pressure left in this Oh yeah, there is a little bit. And there's no fluid left in here. But on this one, instead of drilling it here, which is fine, I'm going to try one in the bottom. And I looked at this valve stem, and from here down, this is all going to be in the tank. So all that's going to be left is from here to the end of the valve stem. And if I put that in this indented part here, you can see that it'll be below the lip. So I can go ahead and put this in, and it'll still be fine. I can stand it up, and then when I want to fill it, I can just fill from the bottom. Now you can buy valve stems at Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot or any big box store, hardware store. But I just stopped by a tire changing place and asked them if I could have a few of their old ones. They pop these off every time they change the tires. They said, sure, help yourself, which was nice of them. But I'm going to go ahead and remove the rubber from here, and we'll be left with this. And you can make that stem whatever length you want. Cut that off. First thing I'm going to do is pop the core out of here, and you can pick up little valve stem tools, at, again, at the same places. There's nothing nothing fancy about these and just pull that out there's all different styles of these this is a real cheap one that came with a tire repair kit I think but you just unscrew that pull the core out set it aside you want to keep that and we'll go ahead and pop that rubber off of there now for you people that don't have a torch I've never done this before I usually take a torch and burn them off but I'm gonna to try to cut this off and see if I can just peel that off. 
Oh yeah, nothing to it. So you don't even need to burn these off. There we go. That's exactly what we need. And then you want to clean this up. Because we're going to solder it. And now I'm going to take a little rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and just clean that up and take the contaminants off. There we go. Next thing I want to do is drill a hole. I'm going to drill it in the bottom of the can. Or you can put it up here. And what I want to do is drill the hole big enough so that this will slide in, but not so big that it'll go past that lip. So I've got a little gauge here and 1564 or even a quarter inch would work. And I'm just going to take a punch and put a little dent in there so my drill bit doesn't run all over everywhere. There we go. Then I can drill my hole. There we go. We'll check our fit. Beautiful. And you can see I'll still be able to stand the can, can up. Now the next thing I want to do is get this paint off of here so that my solder will hold. You can do that with sandpaper, with a file if you're working up here, or a grinding wheel. And I've got this handy little grinding wheel, and I'm going to use that. Now because this can originally held carburetor cleaner, it's very, very flammable. So I'm going to go ahead put some water in there and rinse this out because I'm going to work with heat to solder this. I want to clean this off first. Don't want to dump stuff in there. We'll put just a little water in there. Rinse that out. And I'll dump that out. Now I'm just going to wipe this valve stem off again with some rubbing alcohol and our can also. Got all the water out of it. And now I'm going to go ahead and tin both the valve stem and the can. Just take my soldering iron and a little solder. Heat this baby up. You can do this with a propane torch too. And now we'll go ahead and tin the valve stem. That's good. Now I didn't do it on the valve stem, but it helps to put flux on here for bonding and melting. You get a better solder. So I recommend some flux. And this is an old junky soldering iron that I'm using here. So you should have much better success than I am if you got a decent soldering iron. Good. Now all we have to do is put the two together and I'm going to put some flux on here and some flux on here and for this I'm going to use my torch. The threaded side stays up. There we go. That looks good. Let that cool. And that would have been a lot easier to flux that with the torch because I've got a crummy soldering iron. We'll let that cool. And I don't see any bad spots on there. You want to check for voids. There might be a little one there. I might just hit that with some heat right there. 
Throw some flux on there. That one filled in nice. That looks good. Now, if you're putting your valve stem up in this area, you want to be very careful not to damage this valve. You need to fill this area with water so that'll keep that cool and just heat it enough to get a good solder joint here. And now we can put our valve core back in here and test it and see if we've got any leaks. Okay, I've got the nozzle back on. We're good. And I'm going to go ahead and pump this up, make sure that our solder joint is good. I've got my compressor set to 90 pounds per square inch. And again, do this at your own risk. I've never had a problem with it, but I'm not recommending you do this. This is for entertainment purposes only. There we go. I don't see any leaks around there. You can check with some water. Oh, we're looking good. It's a good solder. You also want to make sure you get the stem in there good and snug that down because they can leak from there, just like your car tire. How about that? I'm going to take the core back out and we'll fill it with some WD-40. Then you just need some sort of container that has a small enough hole in the tip where you can go ahead and fill this. Now you don't want to fill your bottle all the way up. You want at least half of it to be air. So I've got a little more than half here. I'll let that run in. And sometimes it helps to push the nozzle here on the other end because that will let some air in because this is going into a sealed unit. So I'll push that and probably hear it filling. And I am pressing the nozzle here on the other end. And of course you saw the straw is way up here. So I'm not losing any fluid doing it this way. All right, that's probably plenty. Now I'll put the stem back in. Tighten that down. Good. And again, my compressor set at 90 PSI. I'll just go ahead and pressure this up. Good. Nice and firm, and we'll test it out. Beautiful. How about that? And there you go. You can save yourself some money once you've got this set up. You don't have to run to the store so much to get WD-40. You'll be all set. If this video was a help to you, Give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online.